We recently got a Harvest Right freeze dryer. I'm loving it, using it to freeze dry all the things. I'm gonna walk you through that process today and show you how this thing works. The freeze dryer is in the house and it is completely set up and ready to go. We are going to use it for the first time. This will be my first time using it, so <laughs> I'm not an expert by any means, but it has been on my wish list for a really long time. I've watched like a crazy amount of videos on these things. So I'm hoping it goes well. We're gonna freeze dry some eggs. I've been, oh goodness, adding all of our eggs <laughs> to this big basket for just a couple of days. Our chickens are really picking up with, with laying. So I've got lots of eggs here and I'm gonna try some strawberries and I'm just really excited to see how this process goes and how everything turns out. So even though the freeze dryer is here in the kitchen for now, it is not going to stay here because I've had so many of you share with me that they are incredibly loud. And our bedroom is actually kind of like right off the kitchen. So I don't know if I would want the freeze dryer running for, they can run for like 20 to 30 hours sometimes. I don't know if I would want it running really, really loud when we're sitting here trying to homeschool school or when I'm trying to sleep but I'll just have to see once I fire this thing up and get it going maybe it won't be as loud as everyone said but even then I don't think long term I want to store it in my kitchen it takes up a ton of space and eventually on that wall I want to put like a really pretty hutch but that's gonna cost money and be expensive so we'll put that off for another day anyway the freeze dryer will eventually be moving either to the laundry room which is here on the main level or to the basement just somewhere where it is out of the way but still accessible now there are a few sizes we went with the medium size and it is still huge and it's very heavy it is like 225 pounds so my husband was able to get it in our house and up on the counter but like I said, it was very, very heavy. My husband's a really, really big guy. So you might want to think about having help if you're thinking about getting a freeze dryer and you want to get it situated. But other than the size, the setup was actually really easy. Or at least I say that. My husband set it up. It took him like 10 minutes and he has not been watching a ton of videos for years like I have. He just flipped through the instructions and was able to set it up really quickly. It's all pretty straightforward and easy to understand. As far as food preservation goes, I have been canning you know both water bath canning and pressure canning for years now we've done that together here on this channel i have tutorials and videos on canning i also have tutorials on storing food long term without a freeze dryer just using um, certain foods you can store for a really long time using mylar bags and oxygen absorbers but i am so excited to add this into our rotation because freeze drying unlike all of the other preservation methods removes about 99% of moisture from food, meaning that it is shelf stable for 20 to 25 years. So I can freeze dry something like these eggs, which will then turn into a powder. I can put them in a jar and then store them in my pantry for years and years and years, which, you know, I don't anticipate needing to store food that long, but I'm more thinking of practical uses like in the winter when my chickens stop laying, which is always such a bummer. You know, sometimes you'll get like a new batch of chicks that continues laying really solidly through the winter, but when it happens, when they stop laying, when you're out of eggs, there's really not much you can do about it. Some chickens don't even respond to like artificial lighting. And I just don't like to use a lot of artificial lighting. So anyway, this is going to be a great way for us to stay in the eggs through the winter. Or, you know, we just had a situation where we thought our cows were bred and they were not. So we dried them up thinking we were going to have new calves like any time. And turns out they're not pregnant. We don't have any milk, so we've been without our own raw milk for several months now, which when you're used to raw milk, that's kind of a tough change to make. But if I would have had this freeze dryer and been freeze drying all of the extra milk that I was getting like last summer, I could have just reconstituted it and we could have had our raw milk all winter, which would have been so nice. But now we have the freeze dryer and there's so, so many things you can do. So like I said, today we're gonna do eggs and strawberries. I'm just gonna walk you through. This is my first time. I'm not an expert by any means, but it looks pretty straightforward. I don't think I can mess this up too badly. <laughs> and when we're finished with the process, I will reconstitute some eggs. I'll have the kids try some strawberries and we will report back and just let you know how it goes. As far as freeze drying versus dehydrating, um, you know, essentially you're removing a lot more moisture. So with a dehydrator, 
you are removing anywhere from like 70 to 90 percent of the moisture from food through a heat process and you can you can actually just leave stuff out in the sun and dehydrate it that way so it's a very simple way to make foods last longer food that has been dehydrated will usually be shelf stable for about a year but with a freeze dryer your food is going to be shelf stable much longer because like i mentioned earlier you are removing 99% of the moisture and it's through a different process. It's through like a vacuum process in extremely cold temperatures. I think it's like negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. A dehydrator is still a wonderful tool to have in the homestead kitchen, but the freeze dryer is really the best as far as just preserving the flavor and the nutritional content and the shelf life. I mean, you really can't beat it. I got two sets of these trays that slide in and out of the shelving on the freeze dryer. That way, if I ever want to just kind of keep things going, especially in the summer when it's harvest season, like if I want to do tomato sauce or something and I've got lots of tomatoes and want to keep rotating trays in and out, then I don't have to wait to wash my next set of trays before I get the next batch going in the freeze dryer. And another thing I should mention is if you freeze your food in the freezer before freeze drying it, it will cut down on the time it takes significantly. So I think if, if you put food in there when it's fresh, it's not frozen, it's going to be like around 24 hours. That seems to be the average consensus from everything I've read, which we'll find out. But when you freeze it, you're gonna cut several hours off. So I did get the lids too. That way my plan, well my thought is that, you know, in the evening I could prepare whatever I'm going to put in the freeze dryer and then put the lids on trays and put these trays in the freezer so that in the morning they I'll take the lids off and whatever I put in the trays let's just go with our tomato example let's just say I have tomato sauce then my fruit tomato sauce is already frozen I will put it in the freeze dryer and it's ready to go it won't take as long and then I will prepare the next batch put it in the other set of trays put the lids on put that in the freezer and then by the evening I could start a second batch, let that run overnight and just kind of keep that cycle going. So that is my thought. I think these things out a lot. Like I really think these things through because I do so much research before I invest in something or start using something new that's like a big deal like this. But anyway, I'm hoping this works well. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with our eggs. I'm not gonna be cycling through. I actually don't even have enough eggs to fill up all of the shells in my freeze dryer today. That's why we're gonna do eggs and strawberries. Um, this medium freeze dryer, these trays, I believe you can fit 18 eggs on one tray. So I am gonna keep track of that. I'm gonna just crack 18 eggs at a time, fill one tray and see how that goes. I'm just gonna wash my eggs. You know, when I'm storing my eggs to use, fresh, then I actually just store them at room temperature and I don't wash them. If you want to store them at room temp, do not wash them. <laughs> Leave the bloom intact. The bloom is the protective layer. It's on there from the chicken and it, you know, helps to keep them good for weeks at room temperature, um, if not longer. But since I'm going to crack these open, I am going to wash them and then make sure that I get the freeze dryer going. So the first thing I need to do is make sure that this pressure valve here is uh, perpendicular, that it is closed so the vacuum system can work properly and everything can cool down like it should. Then this is really self-explanatory, just going to hit start. Um, it's going to take 15-20 minutes to cool the vacuum chamber before I'm ready to load my trays so I can go ahead and get my eggs ready while that is preparing. The vacuum chamber is cooling for the next 15 minutes or so. I'm just going to crack my eggs and scramble them all up get them ready to go into the trays. So I did 54 eggs that should fill about three of these trays and then I'll have two trays left still for my strawberries. So I need to wash and cut them up. I don't know if I can get this all done in the next 15 minutes, but we shall see. Now the freeze dryer is running and I actually don't think it's that loud. Like it's loud, you can hear it. You can hear it in the background right now, but I was prepared for something just really loud and obnoxious and it's kind of like just a loud white noise machine that you would put like in a toddler's room or something. So, you know, it's not that bad. I don't know if we could make it work long term in that space, I might consider it, but I just don't think we can with what I want to do over there. So 
maybe the laundry room. I was thinking the basement when I was thinking it was gonna be like really, really loud, but this just isn't as loud as I thought. So the laundry room is just down that hall there and around the corner, it's pretty close to the kitchen. That would be so, so handy. Now I just need to figure out how to ask my husband to build this into the laundry room because it would take some work, but we'll see if I can butter them up. The top of the line, truly free range pastured eggs at the store, which, you know, I have my doubts. I know that they, they can be tricky with the labeling to make us think that these chickens are like actually out on pasture when they maybe just can see a blade of grass or something. But the supposedly really, really good eggs at the store are like $7 a dozen. And I live in the Midwest where things, I live in the rural Midwest where things tend to be cheaper. So I just can't imagine how much a dozen really, really good eggs cost like on the East and West coast or big cities or whatever. But you know, this I'm freeze drying four and a half dozen. So that's about 30 bucks worth of eggs. So, you know, if I had this freeze dryer full, I could get about six dozen or so. And if I did that for a few days, then that's, that's a lot of money saved on eggs. All right. So I'm getting my strawberries here to prepare these to freeze dry fruit, you want to um, do so in a in an even single layer. So don't just pile everything really, really high. You wanna make sure everything gets totally dry. So I cut my strawberries to be like a quarter, probably less than a quarter inch thin and then spread them on some parchment paper on my trays in an even layer so that they don't stick. And as I'm loading trays into the freeze dryer, I'm closing it in between loading different things just so the chamber stays cool. So I put my strawberries in. Now, the easiest way that I have seen to do like a liquid is to load your trays and then pour the liquid into the trays. That way you're not trying to carry full trays of liquid over to your freeze dryer and having it spill and then there's a huge mess. I have done this again since filming this original video and I can say that Blending your eggs up in a blender and pouring them in from there is a lot easier. So I'd recommend doing that. I filled up all three trays. I mean, there's not, I don't have any way to know if there's like exactly 18 eggs in each tray, but I just filled them more or less to the top. And now I'm going to close the freeze dryer and make sure I'm talking to my husband as I'm doing this. <laughs> so um, close this, make sure that the latch is closed all the way. Hit continue and we're good to go. This will be on freeze mode for the next nine hours or so. Hey, it is beeping and it says process complete on the screen. So, so far this has been really easy. The screen has walked me through everything and told me what, what to do. I haven't had to reference the um, instruction manual at all. So now it says I need to open the drain valve and I have, let me show you here, um, just a little pot here. All of the moisture that was removed from the food is going to drain into this pot. Hopefully it's big enough. If not, I'll just switch it out for a five gallon bucket. But that drain valve that we looked at earlier that needed to be closed so that the vacuum system could seal and everything could cool down properly, I need to open that now and we'll see what happens. I'm assuming I should see water start coming out of here. So we'll see. This process did take about 24 hours from start to finish. So everything that I had read and watched was correct for fresh food, just plan on about 24 hours. So as you can see, I'm wearing something different. We're into the next day and I'm unloading all of my freeze dried food, which is so exciting. Now I did <laughs> kind of misunderstand one thing. I thought that when I turned that valve and I, I had the you know little drain tube hooked up that water would start coming out of the freeze dryer immediately. But I'll show you here in a second that it has to defrost. All of the water is like frozen in a ring around the chamber. You do have to defrost the chamber in between whatever you're freeze drying. So if you want to just keep this thing running, you need to allow about two hours for defrost in between each batch of whatever you're freeze drying. So look, I'm showing you right now. You can see like the layer of ice <laughs> around the chamber. It says process complete. And I'm gonna go ahead and defrost because I am finished for now. So this whole process was so simple. I did not reference the manual once. I just followed the prompts on the screen and was able to understand it and 
complete the freeze drying process very easily. So I close the door and now we're gonna let this thing defrost. All right, so I tried a strawberry and they're delicious. Um, definitely still has all the flavor. Very light and airy and just not crunchy, not crispy, I don't know. I mean, if you've had freeze-dried fruit, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But these things are <laughs> totally dry. I have my windows open. It's windy, and they're, like, blowing in the wind a little bit. So all I have to do is put these strawberries in a jar or something. I guess if I wanted to store them super long-term, I could do Mylar bags. But I'm just going to put them in a jar, seal them, and store them in the pantry and I will reconstitute some uh, probably tomorrow because I've got the eggs behind me I'm not gonna try the raw eggs <laughs> but um, I will blend it up into a powder and I'm gonna store it that way so maybe tomorrow morning I will reconstitute some eggs and do a taste test and let you know how everything turned out this is going to save so much freezer space you know we get a lot of produce from our garden and I do can a lot but canning it's time consuming and it's a lot of hands-on time. I love it. I actually do really enjoy it. But it takes time. The alternative is freezing and that takes space. And we use a lot of freezer space for our meat. Now you can freeze dry meat. So maybe we'll get to that at some point. So you see that I just put my strawberries in jars and store them just like that in the pantry. Now I'm adding my um, eggs to my blender. I'm just going to blend them up into a really fine powder so that I can fit more of them into a jar and just, just save more space that way. Now that defrosting process on the freezer took about two hours. So, you know, I actually just kind of stepped away and forgot about it. And the next day I went to show you how much water I got out of it and my mic was off. But anyway, it was maybe a gallon of water. You definitely don't need a five gallon bucket to drain your freeze dryer you know, a couple gallon pot will be just fine. I've got my egg powder here. So two tablespoons of powdered egg plus two tablespoons of water equals one egg. So I usually make about a dozen eggs when I'm scrambling eggs for us for breakfast. So I'm gonna do a cup and a half of this egg powder here and a cup and a half of water. I will add in a little bit of milk. We'll see what it looks like and see how they turn out. You know, the great thing about freeze drying raw eggs like this is that you can use them, you know, any way you would normally use eggs that are scrambled up. Obviously, you're not going to have like fresh fried eggs or whatever, but in baking, which that, man, I'm so excited about that to just have a sure way to have eggs for all of my wintertime baking because that's when I like to do the most baking. But also just, we love scrambled eggs for breakfast. I could eat scrambled eggs every day for breakfast and we do eat them a lot. We also really like hard boiled eggs and fried eggs. We're, we're not too picky. We like our eggs. So here's my final product. These are my reconstituted freeze dried eggs that are now scrambled. Moment of truth. So they look like regular scrambled eggs, um, texture, everything. So I'm gonna give John a bite first. Probably really hot. <laughs> See what you think. Thoughts? Tastes like normal egg. Mm. Yeah. I mean, same. Yeah. Nothing special. Nothing different. Just the same. So, there you have it. We are going to reconstitute some strawberries. I'm going to try some. So, I read that it takes anywhere from like two or three minutes of soaking these in water. And that's all you do is just soak um, dried fruit, your freeze dried fruit, just soak it in water. So I read that it takes anywhere from like two or three minutes to 15 to 20. That's a wide range. So we're just gonna watch them and see because a lot of people said that if you let them soak for 15 to 20, they end up very mushy, which I don't want mushy strawberries. So we're gonna keep a close eye on these and see what the verdict is. Now, if my kids had their way, I would not reconstitute them at all. They have been loving the freeze dried strawberries as a snack. Okay, so I tried one at three minutes and it still felt maybe a little bit crispy. So then I just tried one again. It's been seven minutes and this is perfect. I feel like if I let them sit longer, then they will be mushy. So we're gonna go with like seven minutes or so. But you know, if you wanna experiment, then you can do that. So the texture is a little bit different. It's not exactly like fresh strawberries, but it does still have the flavor. So this is gonna be perfect 
in my granola. That's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna make myself a bowl of granola with milk and strawberries. I am so glad we got to bust out the freeze dryer and put it to use in this video. It will be making regular appearances, you know, as we go through the growing season, I am sure. And I'm just looking forward to using it for all kinds of different things and taking you all along with me as I do. So I will link the information for this freeze dryer in the description along with everything else that I talked about today. And I will see you all next week.